So Stephen Braun on my team wrote these, there's a rebuild of some articles we wrote, I think in 2017. And the idea here was to say, glide paths are a wonderful invention for most people who are not going to think deeply about investments. But the reality is not every 50 year old is in the same financial situation. So is there a way in which we can try to generalize the problem a little bit more and try to find what would be the optimal portfolio for someone of a certain age and of a certain wealth level? Now, optimal here can take so many different definitions. We just defined optimal as being maximizing the probability of not running out of money before you die. And then we said, instead of saying how old someone was, we were just going to try to measure years from death, right? Because you could be a very healthy 90-year-old and have a higher life living expectation than a very unhealthy 60-year-old, right? So we really want to generalize the framework as much as possible. But the idea was, if you died with a penny to your name, that was considered success. There was no you know, benefit for uh, excess bequeathment. And then starting with that assumption, we walked backwards and took a, a step backwards and said, every year you're going to spend one wealth unit and we're going to have to figure out what, for given how many wealth units you have, what portfolio should you invest in such that you then don't run out of money over that next step. And you keep walking that process backwards. And this really interesting sort of zone region emerges of, in this grid. And if you look at it, there's really three primary zones. One is this top right triangle that says you have enough money that you're just not going to run out. Just don't mess up. You could invest in cash. You could invest in a diversified portfolio. As long as you're not spending all your money on lottery tickets every year, like you have so much more money then you're planning on spending. It's a do anything zone. And we said, we're just going to put that in the most conservative portfolio possible. That's all in short term T bills. But really, there's a lot of flexibility to what people could do. You then get into the second zone that says, all right, this is, and this is where there's more of a gradient that says, okay, how you don't have enough to do whatever you want. You need some growth, but you can't necessarily go all growth because then you take too much risk, too much drawdown risk. And if you get, too big a drawdown, then those that amount you plan on spending in retirement represents too large a portion, and then you can outspend whatever you have left. And so you find these portfolios of varying diversification between stocks, bonds, cash, and trend following. The final zone was at the very bottom, which said, you do not have enough money. You are going to run out of money guaranteed. You better swing for the fences. And that's where you saw risk dialed up. And so the first article did this without any stacking. And what you saw was at the very bottom, you were all in at equities because you had to really crank up the risk. And that top right triangle, you were all cash. And in the middle, it was a mix between stocks, bonds, and managed futures, trend following, depending upon how safe you were. The safer you were, it was more bonds and cash. Towards the, the bottom, the more growth you needed, it was a mix between stocks and managed futures. What was interesting is when we got to adding stacking, and that was the second article and said, what if we allow this to go up to a stack of 200%? What would you end up doing? And what was interesting is the opt optimizer almost never recommended a stack of 200%, except in that case where you were guaranteed to run out of money. And that's just pure lottery ticket. But in those diversified portfolios, it was mostly recommending a stack between 10 of 20%. And it was a very diversified portfolio of stocks, bonds, and trend following. And it increased the likelihood of success compared to not stacking by, I think, 30 or 40 percent. And so you saw this, what you saw emerge effectively was through the use of stacking, aka leverage, you were able to benefit from diversification and have a greater certainty that you were going to meet your desired outcomes in retirement. Now, again, all caveated around, this is all simulation based. We have one very simple definition of success, but I think the framework holds intuitively that again, more diversification is typically better when it comes to having greater certainty in your outcomes. 